So um, this will bring to an end our teaching series on mass manners. So this should be the fifth lesson, and we are going to conclude our teaching on mass manners. So I have two things to talk about this evening. One is active participation during mass. Active participation during mass. And then the second one will be exceptions. Exceptions. So I'm going to read this from um, the document of Vatican II Council. It is called Sacrosanctum Concilium. I'm going to read number 14. Mother Church earnestly desires that all the faithful should be led to that fully conscious and active participation in liturgical celebrations, which is demanded by the very nature of the liturgy. Such participation by the Christian people as a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a redeemed people, is their right and duty by reason of their baptism. For it is the primary and indispensable source from which the faithful are to derive the true Christian spirit. So, during the celebration of Mass, the faithful are expected to actively participate in the liturgy because it is through this celebration that the faithful will get the true Christian spirit that they desire. So that's from the document of Vatican II Council, Sacrosanctum Concilium, number 14. So what is active participation during Mass? So it means that we have to be present, body and soul. As I said in one of the um, series, I said that we can, it is possible that we can be here bodily present and our mind will be somewhere else. So now active participation demands that we be present body and soul whenever we come to celebrate the Mass. And when you go back to this citation, you understand that it is not the mass of the priest. It is the mass of the people of God. So the priest is not there as somebody that the people are watching. He is not there as a performer. He is there as Christ representative, but he is also there as part of the body of Christ. So he is not there to be watched or to be clapped for or just like a cinema. So um, we are all called to active participation. So body and soul present. And what does that mean? It means that we have to sing, we have to respond, we have to follow the gestures and the postures. And also, we have to observe the sacred silence. It is very important. So that time for silence is also a time for active participation. So that we are silent doesn't mean that we are not doing anything. Those four sacred silence, we have to be doing something at those points. So it's not that we are silent and then we just enter into a trance and probably we doze off. No. 
there are things that we should be doing at those times of sacred silence. So we have to sing, we have to respond, we have to follow the gestures and the postures, including the sacred silence. And there are some parts of the Mass that the people of God, including the priest, should say at once, should begin at once. I will just give an example. When the priest introduces the Lord's Prayer at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father. So that first part doesn't belong to the priest. It belongs to everybody. So it's not going to be the priest saying, Our Father, and then others will join who are in heaven. No, it is our Father, and it is as my Father as he is your Father. So it's the Father of all of us. We are expected to start that our Father in unison, just to mention but one of them. So as I said, it's not the mass of the priest. It is the mass of all of us, because we are the people of God. So I will stop there about active participation during Mass. So let me go to exceptions. There are some exceptions. So it's not like the church is so rigid about making rules or making standards. There are exceptions. So I will mention about three of them. So the first exception I have is exception for Mass. So the church made it possible that if you have a valid reason, a valid reason why you cannot come to be physically present during Mass, you are excused. So what is valid reason? That would be a good question. What is this valid reason why somebody will not come for Mass? It is not camping, like you are going for camping. That's not a valid reason. It is not a pleasure trip. It is not a valid reason. So you are still bound by conscience and by church's law that you have to attend mass. So camping is not a reason. Pleasure trip is not a reason. Holidays is not a reason. So, and then what is that reason? So the church says that if you are sick, so, so if you are ill, that you cannot come for Mass. It doesn't count as a sin. So you just know that it is not a sin. So one of the valid reasons would be if you are sick. So if you are ill, probably you have COVID, God forbid, and you can't make it for Mass. You are completely excused. So you don't even need to confess that as a sin. Another one is, if you are taking care of the sick, let's assume that you have a very sick person in your home and you are taking care of this person. That counts. It counts as a valid reason why you may not be able to attend Mass physically. Another reason would be, if you have infants, like you just put to bed and then you have to take care of this baby, and you cannot come for Mass. It is also counted as a valid reason why you can't come for Mass. So it is not something like pleasure. You are going for camping, then you can't come for Mass. That is not a reason for you not being present for Mass. So that's one exception. Then the second exception I have here is Eucharistic fast. So this Eucharistic fast also, it is connected to the first exception. I remember that part of the first lesson that I gave on preparing for Mass, I said that we have to observe one hour. You have to fast at least one hour before you receive the Holy Communion. So it is called Eucharistic fast. Fasting at least one hour before you receive the Holy Communion. But there is an exception to that. And the exception is also for those who are sick 
who are very old that they cannot fast. If it's somebody like me, I don't have any reason why I should not fast at least one hour before Mass. But uh, for those who are sick, I mean, you can come for Mass, but you are not feeling so well, but you can still come. You are not bind, bounded by that Eucharistic fast. Or if you are under medication that you have to eat every 30 minutes. So it is not binding on you. And then finally, I have another exception on postures. So, you know, there is a time during Mass we have to kneel down, we have to stand. So those postures, they also have exceptions. If you cannot, by virtue of your physical problem, you cannot kneel down. It doesn't count as a problem. But if you can and you do not, it means that you are not actively participating during Mass. So the church is not so rigid about these um, rules, but the church wants to, to bring a kind of order and um, sanctity and sanity during the celebration of um, the Holy Mass. So I was told that that I should give this mass manners during the weekend masses. I'm still thinking about that. Um, I would think about that. But so this is the end of this lesson on mass manners. And we pray God to give us the grace to have that good manners whenever we come into this church. Remember, it started by preparation. So when we step into this church, we have stepped into a holy space. We have stepped into the house of God. We have come into the presence of God. Christ is present here in this tabernacle, so we should at least maintain silence. If you don't want to pray, there are those who want to pray. May God continue to bless us Increase our faith in him and give us the grace of a good celebration of the Eucharist. Peace be with you.